Sir Oliver Mowat. Born on July 22, 1820 in Kingston, Ontario, he is of Scottish descent. He attended the Quebec Conference in 1864. Though he is not one of the main people of the Confederation, he started a campaign to help define Canada's Constitution, which is also known as its Charter of Rights and Freedom. After being admitted to the bar in 1841, he moved to Toronto, where he eventually became a successful equity lawyer. He was eventually the director of the Upper Canada Bible Society, and then eventually moved on to becoming the director of the Anti-Slavery Society of Canada. He was appointed to the Senate of the University of Toronto, and then eventually became a bencher at the Law Society of Upper Canada in 1853. As an adult, he became a partisan of the Reform Party for Canada. He dabbled briefly in municipal politics, becoming an alderman for the St. Lawrence Ward in Toronto between 1857 and 1858. He eventually became the Harbour Commissioner in 1857 as well. While still an alderman, he attended a political conference organized by George Brown, eventually being appointed to the Central Committee of the Reform Alliance. In 1858, he started to sit on to the Assembly of the Province of Canada, representing Ontario South. Once there, he was considered to be Brown's right-hand man. He was a prominent reform leader as well. He was a provincial secretary during the brief Dorian Brown administration in 1858. He is often credited as being the only delegate able to push his ideas forward during the Quebec Conference. He was highly supportive of the idea of representation by population and um, a uniform system for a criminal law. In November of 1864, he was appointed vice chancellor of the Upper Canada Court of Chancery and quickly became known as a judge who was not easily thwarted. This is a position he kept even after Confederation until 1872 when he succeeded Edward Blake as Premier. Under Mowat's leadership, agriculture was modernized, industry recognized, education and scientific areas cultivated, urban problems addressed, and trade unions accepted as part of society. Substantial government regulation was also introduced as well as secret ballots and many other social projects. He was often said to be a troublemaker and was certainly a thorn in Sir John A. Macdonald's side. He was a strong advocate for provincial rights and was confident that the British North America Act would guarantee provincial sovereignty. He decentralized Canada's political structure by giving the provinces more political freedom. He did so by getting in numerous legal battles with Sir John A. Macdonald and his federal administration. Due to their ideas about centralized and decentralized government, MacDonald eventually nicknamed him the Little Tyrant. In 1887, he attended the first Canadian government's conference in Quebec. Under his chairmanship, the conference passed many resolutions that allowed provinces to have sovereign control affairs under its jurisdiction. After the conference, Ontario became one of the most dominant and richest provinces within the Confederation. He spent 24 years as the Liberal Premier elected six times as the provincial representative for Oxford North. He was the Attorney General until 1896 when he was elected to the Senate. At the age of 76, he worked as a government leader, eventually becoming the Federal Ju Minister of Justice. He was eventually knighted in 1892. In 1897, he became the Lieutenant Governor of, of Ontario, leaving Ottawa. He has fortunately died in 1903 at the age of 82 at the Government House. He left behind a legacy of the first political giant of Canada and the first great premier of confederation. He built a pragmatic and diverse liberal party that represented all of Ontario, from the urban to the rural to the Catholic to the Protestant churches. His tenure in office represents the emergence of Ontario as a new great capital. He is held in high regard as a party builder who played a key role in the development and establishment of the structure and style of politics in the 19th century and the provincial relations in the 20th century. Though he may not be the best known father of confederation in Canada, he still left a lasting impact on Canada through a decades-long political career. From attending the Quebec Conference and pushing for a constitution in Canada, to becoming a senator at the University of Toronto, he truly and profoundly has impacted Canadian politics as one of the fathers of confederation in Canada.